You found a place to belong here in the Circle of Friends. I'm Missy, and I'm with Libby today. Hey, Libby. Hi, Missy. It's so good to be here with you. You know, we have been doing this a while. I yeah. sit and look at you, your glorious, wonderful crown of beautiful hair. You know, <laughs> and mine has turned color as well, or not been turned color, as one would say. It's natural oh, color. All natural, yes. We've gotten older is what yeah, I'm trying to say. we sure have. Um, but And you've aged beautifully and wonderfully and graciously, and you're one of the reasons that I had the courage to go without coloring my hair. <laughs> um, but uh, sometimes I wish I go back and forth. So I'm oh, not saying I, one thing no, or another. I, I hear you. What I'm getting to is just that I want to say the years that we've spent together have been really precious mm. and and are even more precious now the times that we get to sit across the table and open God's Word together. So, mm. Boy, I, I echo that. I really do. And Missy... There are so many times where I feel like I I don't I don't know what to say or even where to go in God's word or or whatever. I don't know what I'm what I'm um looking for today or what I need to glean from the Lord. And then when I know that I'm coming to sit at the table with you, I know that that's going to be a good thing yeah. because he's going to meet both of us right where we are. That's one of the things I love about that is that we come prepared with just what God has been talking and right. speaking to us, you know, as we've opened the word in our own personal study. And then we get to the table and we find that God leads us sometimes in a direction we never expected. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's always delightful because it's practical. His word is living, breathing. Mm. It's always applicable. Um, sometimes it's painful, truthfully, uh, yeah. because he speaks to each each of us and convicts us of where we need to change and the things that he needs to transform in our lives. But even that is wonderful. It's wonderful because he is active and alive and cares about us and wants to transform oh, us. So true. So don't listeners, don't be afraid of that. If you think, oh, but no, open yourself up to the Lord yeah. and let him examine you. He knows what's there already. Um, and he loves you unconditionally and wants mm-hmm. and longs the, for the best for you. So uh, that's incredible. And I, I'm just going to throw this pitch out there too. If you have a friend, huh? Um, you know, Libby, you and I became friends when our kids were in high school. Um, and it's, that's a long time ago. Yeah. (laughs) Now they're married and having babies and all of that. And, Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. that's a precious friendship to look back on that time. So, so friendships that are developed around God's word or, you know, as a brother and sister in Christ, um, those are precious. Don't take them lightly um, and develop them and hold on to them and Mm -hmm. be grateful and thankful for them because God gives us such a blessing in one another. And if you don't have a friend like that, find a friend like that. Mm -hmm. God wants you to have one. So open up your kitchen table or meet somebody at a coffee shop and uh, open the Word of God and just start talking about what He's teaching you in it. And you will be amazed. Yeah. You'll be amazed at the bonds of friendship and love and uh, just the wonder of all that mm-hmm. will happen. Mm-hmm. Oh, I I absolutely echo that. And I'm going to add this. When you ask God <laughs> for anything, pay attention. Because I think oftentimes what I do anyway is I might tend to ask Him for something, but then I already have in my mind, in my vision, what it should look mm. like. And when you talked about asking God for a friend to do that with... He can answer that in very, in very um, unexpected ways. And I'll tell you a story. This was many, many years ago. And I was leading some Bible studies at, at another church, just with a small, precious group of ladies. And there was one lady there that, you know, this is just true confession time. She just annoyed the heck out of me. And it's like she just wanted to be at the hip with me all the time. And I kind of avoided her. And yet, to her face, in public, I did all the, quote, right things. Mm. Said all the right things. But I knew I was having a problem. And then she asked me if uh, if we could get together and like exercise regularly. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, how do I get out of this? <laughs> Just say no, right? Mm -hmm. But you know what, Missy? God really began to speak to my heart. And and it humbled me because I thought, here I am leading this group of ladies or at least participating with them in this Bible study. 
doing all the right things, saying all the right things, but boy, was my heart in a bad place with this one particular lady. And I could have easily, I think, just just ignored that Mm -hmm. and just gotten through this, but God wanted something more. And so he really spoke to my heart, and I remember her coming to my house, and we'd do our exercise DVD together, and we spent, we just started spending some more time together, intentional time, different kinds of time, and I'm telling you what happened was a miracle. My heart melted for this woman, Mm. and to this day, she is one of my dearest dearest friends. We don't see each other that often. Our paths don't cross. We're in totally different places geographically. But when we do see each other, it's like time has not passed. Mm. I mean, we we take the selfies together. We just rejoice. We rejoice. And I'm like, look what I would have missed had I not paid attention. I loved what you said, that God wanted more for you. And I wanted more. I think that is so true of our lives for each of us that we do we do pray and then we think we know the answer. Mm-hmm. But God wants more for us than even we know of what we want for ourselves oh, yeah. or what we think we want. That's or right. What we think would be best or or any of those things. He is far more able to discern our hearts and our minds and our needs. And he he knows the future. He knows all of those things. So remembering that as we pray and he answers prayer. I mean, Aaron, just even trusting that that if we don't see the answer right now, God knows what the answer is, and He will answer in His time. And so that's part of the faith journey, and I think it's maybe one of the hardest parts because it's unknown, and you, you have to walk in faith as you wait for that answer, or you get an answer that wasn't exactly what you thought it would exactly. be. Exactly. Like, okay, I, I, oh, maybe I didn't word that right. I wanted a friend, <laughs> not a whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then you find out, oh, this is exactly what I needed. I am so thankful because it's far more than I ever dreamed it could be. But God knew. That's right. And I love the way that you just clarified that. Uh, you know, when you go through things like that, or maybe I should just speak for myself, when I go through things like that, it leads me into a deeper realization that I I really can't trust my own heart. Mm. I mean, there are times, yes, I can. I, God has given me a good heart, but only through through Him do I have a good heart. But it's still not a heart that's completely trustworthy. It's still a heart that can be wicked and deceptive, mm-hmm. as Jeremiah says. Yeah. But it is a heart that's been transformed by God. So because of that, He has allowed me to see that if I put my trust in my heart, in my desires, in my emotions, I'm going to mess up, and I'm not going to have his best. And years ago, that kind of led me to maybe a different kind of understanding of uh, Psalm 37.4, which is very familiar. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires mm-hmm. of your heart. And that's a beautiful, beautiful verse. And two parts— Delight yourself in the Lord, mm. and He will give. But I'm gonna I'm 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 gonna skip ahead to the giving you the desires of your heart. And I think the the default interpretation of this is if you delight yourself in the Lord, then He's gonna give you what you desire in your mm. heart. And and that's true. That's true because of the if you if you delight yourself in the Lord then your desires are going to line up with his because that's part of the um, uh, the outcome of delighting yourself in the Lord. You are going to be lined up with who he is and mm. what he wants. And so that leads me to the second half of that verse, and I interpret it then as, and he gives me the desires of my heart. He literally puts those desires into Mm. me, Mm. the ones he wants me to have. Mm. And then we're in perfect alignment. Mm. But that only comes from spending time with him and um, being willing to, again, pay attention to how he is attending to the details of your prayers. Mm. And he is. He's attending to the details. But I think uh, our tendency is to miss it because we have in our mind, 
how we think the outcome should look. <laughs> well, and often what we're looking for is convenience or comfort or ease. Yeah. And that's not what we're, we're called to. Sometimes we forget that he t- tells us to take up our cross mm. daily, um, mm. to endure mm. hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, Yeah. Uh, to turn the other cheek. I mean, the things that he calls us to do are not easy for us personally. It means sacrificing something mm-hmm. of ourselves and our own mm-hmm. wants and desires. And that doesn't mean that God doesn't want good things for us. He does. He absolutely does. But following his path and his way to that is counterintuitive to our own fleshly desires, to the world's ideas of what we should do. Um, it, it's opposite of all that sometimes. Yeah. So keeping aligned with him is really extremely important so that we stay on the path, his path, his mm-hmm. way. Um, mm-hmm. Because it doesn't make sense. If, if you don't have a spiritual understanding of who God is and a relationship with him, what he calls us to do makes absolutely no sense at all. That's right. That's right. Wow. (laughs) So how do you explain that to somebody that doesn't have a relationship with him? But here's the beautiful thing. You don't have to. You just love them, speak the truth in love, and uh, bring them into that, that knowledge of having a relationship with him. And here's the thing. We don't actually even do that. You know, we lay the seed, we water it, he makes it grow. Well, when we become his hands and feet and become who he wants us to be, doing the things he calls us to do, other people are drawn to that, not because of us, but because of him in us. That's right. And that's, that's right. the whole reason he's given us the Holy Spirit is because we are unable to do it on our mm-hmm. own strength, in our own strength, on our own power, even in our own understanding, um, which is another psalm, lean not on your own understanding. Because mm-hmm. if you do, you're going you're gonna to go off path. Yeah. And for all of us, the challenge is is to stay connected with the Lord and staying on the path that He's called us to. Yeah. And you can't do that separate and apart from His Word. Uh, it's so key, so critical to all of us, to our daily living, to our own personal lives. And then it's important to break it open together, you know, yeah. in small groups, in worship, in corporate worship. Um, the preaching and teaching of his word, the the studying of his word, the meditating on his word, all those things, there's a reason for that. Mm-hmm. And that is we can't make it on our own. That's right. That's right. And we, we need each other for the encouragement. And even his word says that we have victory mm-hmm. when we testify, when yeah. we tell our story. So it is about being victorious. Well, I know that it's time for a break, so let's take a break, and then we'll come back and dig into some more of his word. Thanks for joining us here today in the Circle of Friends. What should I wear? Our boutique at the Village Gift Barn has the answers. Arriving daily, our clothing is a delight. You will enjoy our wide variety and the uniqueness of each style. We offer many accessories to complete any outfit. Your answers can be found in our boutique that is never ordinary. Village Gift Barn. Berlin, Ohio.
Here in the Circle of Friends, you're with Missy and Libby today, and thanks for joining us. And Libby, what an interesting conversation, and one of those things we talked about before the break is how sometimes we get kind of far from where we thought we'd be, but we always end up in a really great place. And since I mentioned this verse, I want to look at it. Yes. And I know you have it in one of the other Gospels, but I'm looking at Matthew 16, and I'm going to read a few verses, and then maybe you can read it from the other Gospels Absolutely. as well. Um, this is Matthew uh, 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And then it goes on to say, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? And Missy, I'm going to read from Luke chapter 9, starting in verse 23. Then he said to them all, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit his very self? Mm. Now, if we just kind of break this down a little bit, These are tough words Mm -hmm. to hear. And I think part of the the problem we run into, uh, you know, today and and probably for years and years is we don't fully understand what it means to take up your cross daily. Daily plus. Daily. There's a proviso before that that says deny yourself. That's right. I think would venture to say that many of us have no understanding what it means to deny ourselves. We deny ourselves a very little in today's world mm-hmm. in with the blessings we've been given uh you know just in where we live. Now obviously not everybody is there but but oftentimes we become very comfortable Christians. And if you're a comfortable Christian, I think it's time to stop and ask yourself, what am I denying myself? Yeah. I mean, that's mm-hmm. a tough, that's a tough question to ask because that's right. just being honest here, who wants to deny themselves anything? That's right. You know, we, we want it all and we're, mm-hmm. we're sort of promised it all in our culture. You know, mm-hmm. anything is possible. You can have it all. Mm-hmm. You can, you know, 
be all you can be. I mean, <laughs> well, no, you're right, and and our culture makes it easy. It's easy to get a credit card. Mm -hmm. It's easy to get a loan. Right, right. It's just easy, and we deserve it. Right. That's right. that's the message that we're told, and. And this really encompasses everything. Denying ourselves is not just about denying material goods or comfort of stuff, but it's denying our own perceptions. That's it's right. denying our own attitudes. Yeah. It's denying it's denying me. Yes. Anything that is focused on me. Yeah. My that is, rights. Yes. My, my will yeah. that is not subjected to God. Yeah. Now, now I want to I want to back up here and be very clear. I'm not saying that we don't take care of ourselves, that we don't think of ourselves, but we think of ourselves the way God thinks of us. You know, I want to read this from the message um, because it puts it again in today's good, vernacular, good. the paraphrase of it. Then he told them what they could expect for themselves. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. Mm, mm -hmm. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, to finding yourself, your true self. What good would it do to get everything you want and lose you, the real you? If any of you is embarrassed with me and the way I am leading you, you know that the Son of Man will be far more embarrassed with you when he arrives in his splendor in company with the Father and the holy angels. Mm, mm -hmm. Those are pretty clear. <laughs> oh, it's clear, and you're right. It's in vernacular that we can understand. Self-help is no help at all. And self-sacrifice is the way to go. So so what does self-sacrifice mean? In in a world today where, and I get it, I get, you know, feminists who are fighting for women's rights and equality. I, I mean, I'm a woman. I understand that. Yeah. I see equality mm -hmm. all the time. And, and it breaks my heart. But, but for me personally, mm -hmm. what's the most important thing here? That's right. Am I called to make sure that Missy gets all her rights? No, I'm not. Now, I may be called to make sure Libby gets all her rights and to fight mm -hmm. for Libby. But for myself... What am mm -hmm. I sacrificing for myself? Mm -hmm. um, and yet, oh, I, you know, to understand this and to grasp this and to, to know um, what he is saying, uh, don't run from suffering, embrace it. Mm -hmm. Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. If we could grasp what that means, mm -hmm. I, and I haven't. I'm just going to be really honest. I don't want to suffer. I don't want yeah. my kids to suffer. That's And right. yet, here we are told that we we need to that we need to to lose our life for his sake mm -hmm. to set aside our rights our wants our desires for his sake and for his kingdom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it goes back to for me what i said earlier about my friend i knew god had something better for yeah. me That's, and that comes through suffering yeah. often yeah. or you know suffering may be too big a word for that situation but that does come through suffering and it comes through giving up yourself. Yes, absolutely. Because when we give up ourselves and our wants and our desires and we follow him, mm -hmm. he leads us in the right path. That's right. I, and I, I want to say this because I often hear people say, that's too hard. I, I, I can't do that. Whatever that is. Yes. Uh, and oftentimes doing the right thing is the hard thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it, seems, it seems to be, let me put it this way, it seems to be the harder thing. Um, the discipline, as Beth would say, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's financial, emotional, you know, um, you know, healing relationships. Uh, I mean, we can go on and on. In a lot of areas, doing the right thing may seem to be the hard thing. Like there's an easier way to do it and we want to take the easier way. Mm -hmm. Let me just say this. Really look at your choices and your decisions. Because generally speaking, that hard way is the best way because it leads you to where God wants you to be. And when you get through the hard part, which he will walk with you through, you'll be in a better place than mm. if you took the supposedly easier way and you end up in worse in a worse place than you are now. Oh, I, 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 I mean, I'm I think there. <laughs> financially, you know, how, I mean, maybe you're in trouble financially. How hard is it to begin to deny yourself and have a budget and discipline yourself and not have the things you want? You know, all those things are hard. 
But if you yeah. don't do that hard thing, you won't end up in a place where you are financially secure and begin to be able to to give to those places that you want to do or have those. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Do take the hard path. Oh, that's relationships. Right. Yeah, relationships. That's too much for me. I can't forgive that. Anything but that thing. I can't mm-hmm. forgive that. Or they betrayed me. You don't understand. It's too hard. I can't. I get that. I get mm-hmm. that. And my heart breaks for you for that pain. But God has called us to love one another the way he loves us, and that's unconditionally. Now, Mm -hmm. obviously, boundaries are important. We talk Mm -hmm. about them all the time on the radio. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. But God does call us to forgive, even if you can't be in relationship with that person right now. If it's abusive, obviously not. But he calls us to forgive. We can't do that on our own. That has to come through him. But I'm Mm -hmm. telling you, if you don't forgive, oh my goodness, if you don't do the hard thing, you're going to end up in a place that is not good for you. Bitterness, That's right. strife, envy, uh, anger, all of that stuff comes with unforgiveness. Yeah. Oh, so, so true. And here's the other thing about forgiveness is it opens the door then to what type of reconciliation or healing there needs to be. You mentioned the importance of boundaries. Absolutely. But until you extend forgiveness you are not going to experience the freedom Mm. to have the perspective of Christ to lead you into what the next step is. And that next step might be, no, I don't want you going back to that relationship. Yeah. And that's that that may be the case, but but you're right. You won't have the freedom of knowing what God wants in that situation until you yield yourself and your wants, and your rights, and your desires, right. and your emotions, and all those things that I recognize. I mean, I've been betrayed by people, by the very people who were made to love me and protect me and never fail me, but they're human, so mm-hmm. they failed. So I understand how hard it can be in yeah. those situations, because you have to go beyond yourself. And I don't believe it's possible... I don't believe it's possible to do it to the degree that God calls us to unless we allow him to do it in mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. And and that first step is the willingness to. It's the want to. It's the God saying, God, I, I'm i not there. I don't mm-hmm. feel it. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. I, I don't feel this love for this person. I want, I want to forgive. That's what I want. And that's what I'm going to will myself. I forgive that person, even though I don't feel like it. Can you help me? Mm-hmm. You will be amazed. You will be amazed. And what God brings... You two, through that kind of a step, is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. And it also, it's not only, it's for you, believe me, Mm -hmm. it's for you and for the health of yourself and for your life. If you're caught up in unforgiveness, it's a terrible place to be. And it's only hurting you. It's not hurting the person that hurt you. That's right. They're not affected by that. And they may not be affected by your forgiveness of them. That's okay. God's going to take care of that other person. If you're willing to forgive, God will bring you to a place where you have freedom in Him and can move forward in your life and not drag all of that bitterness and anger and hurt and pain and all of that with you. Mm -hmm. Mm, So true. And I'm going to say this as well. I know we got into forgiveness. I don't know how we did this, but it's not a one-time deal. Oh, absolutely. It's a process. And the people that I've forgiven in my life, honestly... I've had to forgive over and over and over and over again. You know I've had what? to tell myself, been there, yep. done that. Mm-hmm. I have done that. I'm not going to allow that thought come to me. I'm going to move forward. That's taken care of. And it's so it's still, you, you don't get rid of those things that happen to you, mm-hmm. but you allow God to work in them and transform you into who he wants you to be. Oh, so true. And you know what? That comes back to what we just read about denying yourself, mm. picking up your cross daily. Maybe your cross is forgiveness and you have to pick that up daily. Mm. And yes. that's okay. Yeah. That's okay because God is at work in that. And that's exactly who you want to be working for you. Mm. Well, we are at the end of our day. And that's kind of hard to believe. (laughs) But wow, I'm looking forward to coming back tomorrow. And let's pick this up, Missy. Let's just keep going with some of this great scripture. And thank you so much for joining us today here in the Circle of Friends. We look forward to being back with you tomorrow. You have found a place to belong here in the Circle of Friends. Thanks to generous donations, this program is produced by Circle of Friends Ministries. You can write to us at P.O. Box 345, Berlin, Ohio, 44610, or contact us at 330-852-0000. 
you've found a place to belong.